Hey, what's good? My name is PJ and you are listening to the Music Photo Podcast. Session number four. Thank you ever so much for joining us today on the Music Photo Podcast. I'm thrilled to announce that our guest this week is Mr. Warwick Hughes of Sink or Swim Productions. He's a music videographer and more recently a music photographer. He does music videos and live videos working with bands such as North Lane, Hellions, Graves, Trophy Eyes and many, many more. You are going to absolutely love this one. In this episode, we discuss moving to the big city to chase a dream, the importance of your business name, working overseas, getting the attention of a label, and so, so much more. As always, the show notes can be found at bigpantsphoto.com slash podcast. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes or Stitcher. That means you'll get the, the episode delivered weekly to you every Monday. You won't even have to download it. You can stream it for free. And now, without further ado, I introduce to you Mr. Warwick Hughes. Warwick, so good to have you on. How are you doing, my friend? Yeah, pretty good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm sorry for the technical disruptions. Thank you for your patience. That's all right, mate. All good. So you're originally from Aladulla in New South Wales. Is that right? Yep. Small little town there nestled away on the south coast. It's and, good. Yeah, nice one. Did you move to Brisbane or did you just commute to Brisbane? Uh, I moved to Brisbane. Um, just decided to move somewhere where there was a high population and there was actually courses there for me to study in terms of film so yeah that's why I moved up there oh so you did study like post high school you studied film yeah 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 it was like a um a diploma of screen and media I'm pretty sure that was it yeah okay cool do you looking back like if you had your time again do you think that was worth the two or three years you put into it Oh, man. Uh, Part of me says yes. Part of me says no. (laughs) I'm just going to say no, actually, uh, because I spend most of my time uh, bailing lectures to film bands and concentrate on networking with bands, um, which luckily turned good for me. But I don't recommend it because it's a pretty risky thing to do. Yeah. So coming from Dulla to Brisbane and eventually Melbourne, how important has that been to your business and your network? Like, you know, let's say someone, let's say there's a a young person that's living in a country town. How in person <laughs> is that to move to a hub like Brisbane or Melbourne? Um, it's obviously better for business because it's more of a market. Like we, we don't really have many bands coming out from Aladola except for half the lineup from Tonight Alive is from Aladola. Okay. And, there's a DJ artist called Yartzel. I hope I said that right because he got like number 40 on the Triple J Hottest 100 recently. Okay. So that was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's it, it's just more important though because like, you know, in Aladala, that's all what came out for us. And obviously in the city, it's way more frequent than that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, okay, so you moved to Brisbane. When... Coming from Dallas to Brisbane, what sort of network did you have in the scene already or did you basically start fresh? Start fresh. I literally knew no one. I used to go to shows at a venue called The Fort um, and I just tried to meet bands there and people in general that were just in the same music scene, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I started going to a <laughs> lovely establishment called Rosie's, uh, which is a Destroy All Lines venue. But yeah. back then, it was uh, pretty rough. Um, and that's how I started networking with bands because I, um, not long after I started going to Rosie's, uh, they actually contacted me to do videos for them or I contacted them. I can't remember now. It was a while ago. Um, but, yeah, they were I was pretty lucky that they wanted to have me on board and started filming there um, for their clubs and for the bands especially. And, yeah, that's how it all started essentially. Yeah, excellent. You speak really, really well. Have you done this before? No. um, Fun fact, I had a speech impediment for years growing up and I'm always self-conscious about talking. (laughs) What sort of speech impediment was it? Um, Pretty much everything because I was born with really horrible hearing. So um, Is that right? 
Yeah, so it took me, I had to do speech therapy for years and I still struggle to say some words every now and then. <laughs> but it, it makes me a bit self-conscious when I talk. Your enunciation is so perfect. I actually, <laughs> I don't know if you mind, but I might leave some of this in. This is actually really, really interesting to me. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, no worries, man. So that's really good so far. So you mentioned, it's really funny because... I don't know if you um, had a chance to listen to any of the other episodes, but later in the session, I have a question about starting fresh and how how do you do it? What would you do it if you're coming to a new town with no friends, no connection, but you've got your skills and whatnot? So that, I think that's really interesting that you basically nailed that in the first couple of questions. <laughs> so um, you mentioned that you started going to shows. Yeah. I'm assuming from what I know of you was predominantly heavy shows. Yeah, that's right. I pretty much pigeonholed myself in um, the punk and hardcore scene because that's what um, I had grown up in Aladala, I guess. Well, not growing up, but, you know, um, when I was older and I started going to gigs that were pretty much all punk and hardcore scenes. So, yeah. Is that what you listen to as well? Um, Yeah, like, you know, I've been, like, I still listen to the music, um, but, you know, been listening to the music for what like a decade now and you know I guess to a point where you just kind of want to move on so I, I'm listening to heaps of different genres now which is it's a nice break <laughs> yeah excellent it's funny with heavy music I know myself and there's a couple of other people as well that have fallen uh, like from a, to- a photographer's perspective or I'm assuming video is the same we, we fall into that because it's the most exciting thing to be around to document yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, from this perspective of an indie band or a rock band or a folk band or something, yeah. it's just like a bunch of dudes standing around on stage doing nothing. It's not interesting yeah. to photograph. Yeah, it's so weird. Like, I worked, um, there was a DJ festival called Listen Out, um, and I was working for an artist called Zoo or ZHU. I don't know. But all I know is that there was this massive internet hype around him um, because Skrillex was promoting him or whatever. And okay. my friend was like, oh, do you want to film? And I'm like, yeah, sure. And he's like, oh, man, like before we're filming, he's like, oh, it's going to be insane. Like the set's going to be crazy. And like everyone in the crowd were like, you know, it's like you, I, like I go to a festival show for like Soundwave, for example, and it's like a sea of people just jumping up and down and punching each other in the face. And like yeah, it's yeah. wild, like it's insane. And here it's like everyone's just kind of standing there and like, just nodding waiting. their heads and waving <laughs> their hands in the air. And I'm like, what? Like, this is so, so different. But it Like was a kindergarten. Experience. Yeah. Like yeah. a sing-along at kindergarten. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely something, apart from the bands that are just more exciting, there's definitely something to be said about the interactions as well from the audience. Like, that's all yeah. part of it at the heavy shows. That's all part of the community, which is what I love about it. Yeah, definitely. Um. So... So you you've gone from Dallas to, uh, Dallas to Brisbane. You've yeah. started going to shows and networking, meeting bands, or whatever. Was there was there ever a pivotal moment? Was there like a relationship or a chance that you got that really took it up to the next level? Like, where um, did you go from there? It probably like what ah. Uh, so there's two instances. Uh, first one would have been North Lane. This is before Discoveries dropped. Yeah. Um. They did a Queensland tour and the promoter was like, oh, we need someone to do video. Do you want to do it? And I didn't really know North Lane. Like I've heard of them Mm -hmm. and like obviously back then they weren't the band they are now, but I was still like, hell yeah, let's do it. And that's how I met those guys. And um, that helped a lot because just before that run started, they got signed to Unified and then they dropped Dispossession just before it came out. And that's a song that I used for the video. And when you were still in Brisbane? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. So, yeah. So okay. I was still in Brisbane. And then um, the other instance would be when I got hit up to do um, a promotional video for D's Nuts uh, Fuck the World Tour. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can swear on the show or whatever. But, That's all right. We're all well, going to the tour. So <laughs> I'm still professional. Um, it's in context. Uh, yeah. So I did that in Brisbane and um, the D's Nuts guys and their manager really liked the video and they're like oh yeah let's like promote it so they um tagged my name like my business name and stuff on facebook and i was like freaking out because like i'm just like some kid still and i was listening to d's nuts in high school and i was like oh man this is crazy like Uh i thought i was like 
killing it. <laughs> well, it's nice that a band like that would think to actually give you some recognition because it's all too easy for them to just kind of take, take, take and never give anything back. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah Especially yeah, early was, on. Yeah, I was really happy about that. Were you sink or swim in those days or were you was as video still? Oh, man. <laughs> that was the start of sink or swim. Um, North Lane was the first video that I released through Sink or Swim. Okay. Um, that was the first ever video that had that name on it. Um, and there was like this little period beforehand that it was Warwick's Productions, but I didn't like having my name to it because I saw every photographer and every filmmaker or whatever, they would just have their name. Yeah, yeah, or just initials even. Or... Yeah, and I was like, I just wanted to do something different. And Sink or Swim is like, I, and this is a clarifier because I get asked this so much. So yeah. I grew up surfing and Sink or Swim was like a saying that we would always say growing up. So I've said it even before I heard of what like a punk band was kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, like that that saying alone let me led me to live a really spontaneous life. So then I, I was like, you know what, I might as well just name my business sink or swim because it kind of ties in with everything yeah, so yes it's not does. it's not from band lyrics or anything like that like okay. it all the time but yeah. it's from that <laughs> yeah it's not like that thing where a band will call their band after like an obscure lyric in another yeah. band's album yeah it's not it's like that i yeah. um i think that's really fitting because you've taken a few big risks obviously you've you know gotten up and moved uh did you move to brisbane on your own or with your family uh, on my own. <laughs> you did that on your own and yeah, since then you've moved to Melbourne, yeah. um, which I think is probably even a bit more scary than Brisbane. I think Brisbane is still reasonably close to home. Um, close enough? No, Melbourne's closer. Actually. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. Melbourne's closer by about four hours. Oh, okay, so, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like I think that's very fitting and I, I went through the same process. I saw a lot of the other photographers were just doing their names and yeah. – to, to see that tagged with a photo or on a Facebook page or website, it's just kind of instantly forgettable. So yeah. I wanted to have a little bit of a something to hide behind almost. And and I think yeah. it's also cool to have a an interesting name for your business so when you're promoting it, it's not like you're just flogging yourself as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's good. Cool, man. So let's fast forward a bit. You're in Melbourne now. You're picking yep. up some regular jobs. What, mm -hmm. what, um, you were working in an office in Paran, is that right? Yeah. So I was contracted by a, um, small time record label called Melodic Music. And back in the day, they manage Kiss Chasey and Stealing O'Neill, um, bands like that kind of stuff. Two and bands that I love. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I was in Kiss Chasey in high school as well. So I was pretty, pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, it was good because they, gave me a stepping stone to kind of do music videos that weren't related to hardcore bands or anything like that. And it was a good growth experience. And at the same time, I could still work um, in this kind of niche field of like punk and hardcore that I've pigeonholed myself in essentially. And yeah, like it was it, like, a, it was a really good opportunity to be with those guys and learn and grow from them. Yeah, absolutely. And so with that sort of deal, cause I know you were doing music videos for them or was that on your own yeah so they were still contracting they were contracting me so i wasn't working for them i wasn't getting like a you know paycheck from them like a it wage yeah. yeah yeah it was basically like you know um i did the video and like you know we worked out a deal so yeah it was good is it important for you i'm not sure how you work these days but from my understanding, you were working, you were doing all your editing and such in that office mainly. Mm -hmm. Is it important for you to have a workspace that's different from your living space? Does that help? Um, oh, that's a, I would say yes for that. Um, just because it does separate work. I work from home now, like we're currently in my bedrooms is also doubles as my office. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think it's I think it's a little, it's really good to separate the two, you know. Even now, like even now that I'm not at that office anymore, you know, I still go to cafes around the area and you know take my laptop there because usually there's Wi-Fi there and do heaps of emailing work and stuff. And yeah, it's 
it's definitely important to have that separation. Otherwise, you just drive yourself insane. Yeah, well, I can imagine it'd be super easy to just fall into the trap of like, you know, wake up, start working, work through the day, work through the night, go yeah. to bed, wake up, start working. And, and when it's all in the same room, I can imagine yeah. that'd get that get pretty hard. So it's nice that you can you can be a bit mobile for some inspiration. Yeah, definitely. So fast forward to 2015. It's mm-hmm. March currently. What does your what does your Monday to Friday look like these days? Uh pretty chaotic. Um yeah, everything's kind of just uh taken off a bit, which is really good, but it's kind of taken me a bit by surprise. So it's uh it's you know, take every day as it as it comes, I guess, but yep. yeah, it's it's pretty cool to see um this year is, you know, still growing like it like you know that's like the main goal for me is just to kind of always have that constant growth that on constant like uh push and motivation to better myself and my art so yeah it's it's getting there (laughs) absolutely yeah i appreciate that in an ideal world how what would your week look like i'm assuming that due to the i mean just the nature of your clients i'm assuming the bands that you work with probably have jobs during the week so on that assumption i guess you'd be shooting on the weekends mainly for yeah. music videos and stuff so in an ideal world what would your week look like <sighs> what would you be doing like in terms of shooting editing how much time would you spend on the road oh it's so different for everything um like i'll, I'll take you like this recent time that I've had in the last few weeks for video it's been it's been really good um I like editing during the week and shooting on the weekends um and that's kind of the I like what I've got now and you know what like I I think it's pretty good because I'm not just shooting music video only takes one or two days unless they want like you know a huge elaborate thing and you know then it's that's a whole different story but most of the time it's only one or two days shoot so you know to do to sacrifice those one or two days on the weekend every few weeks it's not it's not that bad you just kind of get used to it after a while I guess because like you know you you want to do stuff with your friends but that particular weekend they might be doing stuff anyway so it works out for the best so yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, Um, it's it's a good setup (laughs) I can imagine that also a lot of the bands that you work with are your friends I'm I'm sure there's an intersection there uh, just just through the nature of the industry and the community the, uh, yeah, music yeah. community. Yeah, it's very, very important to. Um, I think it's a very important thing to, um, you know, become try. Well, not like you know, have the main goal to be friends with them, but you know, if they if if you get along with them, then why not? You know, absolutely. Yeah. So, going back to that question a little bit, in an ideal world, how much would you be touring? Like, what what would be the dream in terms of how much time you spend on the road? My ideal situation would be tour full time, but not so chaotically that I would destroy myself. Essentially, it's just yeah. something about being on the road. I guess, like you know, last year I spent half the year living out of a bag, and I wasn't even touring last year. I was doing music videos just all around the country, it's going from and, shoot to shoot, right? Yeah, and it was it was awesome. Like you know, it got to a point where you know I was wearing myself out, but. At the same time, I like I'd wake up every day and be like, "This is cool." Like I'm in somewhere different. I'm shooting something different, and I was like, "I like that." Kind of got me in my head to um, want to tour full time because it's like it's like you're doing the exact same thing, but you're just doing one client. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's good. You mentioned just then that it takes a bit of a toll on your body. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit to the burnout that you have experienced recently, and you know, yeah. why, why that sort of happened? Um, basically I didn't know how to manage anything because last year was by far my most successful year that I've had to date. Um, I shot more videos than I could have ever imagined. I traveled way more than I could have ever imagined. Um, but at the same time, I didn't know how to manage my body. So I was eating takeout food, like drinking menless amounts of coffee. (laughs) And there was two instances last year that I nearly myself in hospital because like my body just burnt out and just crashed and like you know like don't want to go into too many details but like you know like 
be walking down the street and all of a sudden feel lightheaded and I'll just like vomit everywhere and like it was like a really nasty situation. Um, so that was a huge turning point for me. It was like, all right, cool. I'm obviously really busy at the moment and it's not good for my health to to keep doing this. Um, living off this crap food essentially and pushing drinking enough coffee to kill an elephant <laughs> so <laughs> I just um I just decided to take more care of my body so I don't um it's been like six months now since I've had my last burnout and I don't um don't eat any fast food anymore um I eat as much fruit as I can every day and um cut down on my caffeine intake and I just feel way more healthy you know what I mean yeah like, I just feel like I can Step out of bed easier, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Instead of waking up and just feeling like absolute crap and just wanting to die, so it's um it's a good change and it's very very important for sorry anyone to have like a really busy schedule to concentrate on their health because at the end of the day that's what's going to pull you through. Yep, absolutely. That, I mean, that sounds horrible. I've I've yet to experience anything like that but on the yeah, plus side recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> on the plus side how fantastic that you have a job that you're so passionate about that you forget to eat or you forget to eat properly like yeah. like it could be worse you know yeah, you yeah, could be exactly. sitting in an office all week and oh, anyway man. that's fine i don't think that's your i don't think that's going to be your life anytime soon <laughs> <I hope not. laughs> um so you did do a lot of travel last year um yeah. In Australia and overseas, you went to America and Canada. Is that right? Uh, just just America. America, um, yeah. But yeah, like that was that was wild. It's weird because I um, I've got that time hop app and uh, opened up this year, um, opened up this morning, and it was a year ago today. I was coming back from my trip. All oh, right. Yeah, like that. Um, I was over, I was only in America for two weeks, but man, like those two weeks pretty much changed everything yeah. <laughs> everything for me and it was like by far the best experience i've had in my life so what was the connection that you had over there like how did you get over and who did you know um basically at the beginning of last year uh, i worked with you me at six who were supporting paramore on that tour and yep. there was a band opening called 21 pilots who i highly recommend i think they're the coolest band ever <laughs> um they're film buddy um like the guy that like films for them mark he i met him obviously that day in melbourne and that night and that night like he was telling me he's like man you just gotta get to america you gotta (laughs) do this and i at the time i was already tossing it up because um my really good friend ben um was working with off mice and men at the time as their Mm -hmm. drum tech and as their film guy and in my head i was like well ben's already gonna be there uh, I may as well just kind of go over there because it's like, I don't know, like it was like a, next day I bought the tickets and six weeks later I flew out to America and it was the biggest risk I ever took in my life. <laughs> How cool, man. So yeah. did you get into the shows and was it some festivals as well? Was it South by Southwest time? Yeah, so uh, I originally went to go there just to do, like in terms of work, like I would on, I only went there to – um work with of mice and men on that um, American dream tour of bring a horizon. Mm-hmm. And I ended up doing all this other work. So I landed in California um, and was there for a bit. And my friend was too imagining neck deep and he was like, Oh, come out to the shows. And I've never really listened to neck deep before yeah. or anything. And then I was at chain reaction and I was filming the show and I was photographing it. And I was like, man, this is, this is insane. And like um, from there I got, um, a sponsorship through Offense or a clothing line. And they hooked me up with work through uh, Comeback Kid as well. Yeah, for nice. South by Southwest and South by So What as well. And then Which is the like time, the heavy version, right? Yeah, yeah. So South by So What is in Dallas and South by Southwest is in Austin. Austin. Yep. Yeah. So Dallas is like the hardcore one. It goes for like three days. Yeah, cool. Um, and yeah, and like the last one that happened was Epitaph Records reached out and asked me to do some work with them for Ghost Inside, Prom Queen, and Let Live. Yeah. That's a cool one. Did. That's a cool yeah. show. Oh, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, like it's funny that you said when you went over, you didn't really know Neck Deep too much. I feel like it's only since, it's only in that last year that they've really blown up here. I think they've done a couple of tours since, but like yeah. now they're, they're getting on the level of some of those rise 
bands. They're yeah. um, they really don't know. Yeah, they exploded and stoked for them. <laughs> yeah. Do you still keep in touch with any of those bands if they were to come um, here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Neck Deep, I'm forever in debt to, essentially, uh-huh. <laughs> because um, they pushed my name a lot in America. Um, and, yeah, I didn't realise how big of an impact I was actually going to have. Um, same as Comeback Kid as well. Like, they pushed my name a bit, and I was just, like, kind of... And, that, and, that, and that's when I met Ghost Inside as well, and mm-hmm. we've now become friends since then, and, like, that's that's been pretty awesome as well. So, yeah. Yeah, you shot that Ghost Inside show... At um, Frankston a while ago, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Bro Tally tour came in town and I just kind of jumped in with the guys and did like just the Melbourne leg and yeah, that was that was awesome. Like even though it was like a few dates, it was really cool because, you know, like they were like, yeah, we want video stuff and, I'll, and they wanted to do video stuff with me and yeah, I was beyond stoked about that. I saw some clips from that show and it looked mental. It looked so good. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, so we've been talking about all this traveling that you're doing, Mm -hmm. obviously if it's for a music video, a lot of the gear will be hired Yeah. when it's not, uh, you know, if you're just going overseas, say like what sort of gear do you take and, you know, do you still need to hire anything over there? Um, well for the overseas thing that I like overseas trip that I had, it was just all live work. So it was like my run and gun setup. So I have a glide cam, like a steady cam rig that I own. And, um, you know, I've got my 6D with three three prime lenses. And that in itself is like my run and gun setup for any live situation. So it's good. Okay, cool. Yeah. And um, so also in the last 12 months, you've been getting pretty stuck into photography as well as filming. Yeah, that uh, I just fell into that by accident. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh, few photographers that aren't um not then it's not that they're, they're upset with me it's just that like i don't know i just i don't know i just started taking photos and yeah well like happened. <laughs> why not right you've you've got the gear you're there yeah. for the moment so it's natural yeah exactly has that opened you up a bit has that opened you up for some more jobs or like just just giving you another dimension for bands to want to work with you yeah 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 definitely just like a i don't know it's like an extra incentive it's like oh if if I was a tour for a band, they'll like if they were like, "Oh, we only want photos or we only want videos." It's like, well, I can do both, so you know, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. another arrow in the quiver, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. That was the nerdiest analogy I've ever said. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm all about that nerd. Life. <laughs> <laughs> what has been the biggest challenge in learning photography? Obviously, coming from a film background, having studied it and worked in it for the last few years, what what have the challenges been? Mainly finding a different approach to everything visually. Um, like photos are very standstill kind of moments, I guess. And like obviously I, I've done nothing but live photography. Um, it's just trying to find that point of difference that people will look at it and be like, oh, yeah, you know, like that's like, like you know what I mean? Like it's like that trademark look, for example. Sure. So, like, I know Elmer Kais does it a lot. Like, you know, he started doing that on-stage portrait stuff, which started mm-hmm. that whole wave of kids wanting to do that. And just recently he's done the whole rigging the camera up to the lighting roughs on top and getting that massive fish eye. Oh, uh, doing like the remote thing. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Kane did that as well at yeah. an Amity show or something like that. Amity shows, that. yeah. I've seen yeah. those photos there. Ace. Yeah, yeah. So it's just find that point of difference because like, yeah, like – especially in live photography with the amount of photographers that are doing it, you, you got to be on it, man. You got to find something that's going to separate you from everyone else. So yeah, well, important. <laughs> that's certainly a, it's a big thing in Melbourne at the moment. Like there's a lot of kids taking it up, which I love because I, I actually love it when someone wants to learn because then they appreciate the skill and the art. Yeah. And they're, they're like, well, okay, maybe this is not as easy as I thought. I yeah. thought I could just get an SLR and like start a business and succeed, but like, oh man, <laughs> story of my life, and like seeing that. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's a bit it, of a bit of a trend at the moment. There's a lot of kids starting, but yeah, I love it. It's good. It's good to see them at shows. It um sometimes, unfortunately, it feels like everyone's trying to compete with you. It feels like everyone's trying to step in and get the shot, but I think for the most part, everyone's really good to each other. 
yeah, it's definitely definitely has its um, it's like positives, but it's positive and negatives to everything. Yep. Uh, like I personally think it's a bit unfortunate that a lot of kids are getting into it for the wrong reasons kind of thing. Like, you know, they're like, they're like oh, El Caius has like 300,000 followers on Instagram and all he does is take photos of bands. Man, I want to do that. And it's uh, like, okay. and like, yeah, in my head I'm like, oh, well, you know, you got to enjoy it, I guess. Like yeah. people, wanna, people want to try and make a brand of themselves rather than enjoy the art, I guess. So that's me coming from a MySpace era which was like back then when you wanted to be when you wanted to photograph bands back in MySpace, photograph or film, um, you were never known. There was no such thing as like a well known photographer or well known right. filmmaker back then. The only one I ever knew of back then was Hartley because oh, yeah. you know, Hartley's kind of grown with the bands as, as they've grown. So, you know, other than that, like now it's like because of Instagram and stuff, it's pretty um like you know it's a different market i guess yeah there's like photo celebrities now right yeah it's weird (laughs) it's like um you know it's kind of weird that uh, it's a different world that you know i'm slowly adjusting to but it's i don't know it's cool nevertheless like it's great so yeah if if someone appreciates your art then man like that replaces any form of success and money in my books so yeah yeah, sometimes that's all we need, right? Just a little bit of recognition. Yeah, just, just that pat on the back, dude. <laughs> just even, yeah, just like, just to ask if you can use your photos. I mean, what photography you know is going to say no if someone asks nicely? Yeah, exactly. I remember when that started, um, like when kids started, you know, asking me to share my photos around and I'm like, what? I'm like, this is <laughs> like, and back then it wasn't even photos. It was like screenshots of videos. Right. Um, yeah, and like, I, I don't know, like I... Like I'm beyond humbled, beyond like honestly, like I have thousands of people that are doing what I'm doing. They've chosen my art, so yeah, it's good. It's good. It's excellent. Yeah, yeah. I I tend to think that so long as the person is doing it to create value, you know, for a band there or you know whatever their chosen form of photography is, so long as they're trying to put value into the world, like I'm okay with it, even if they're they want to be internet famous if they want to build yeah. a following if it's coming from like the right place that's all good with me yeah yeah <laughs> positive vibes man positive vibes um one question i actually thought to ask you when i was in the shower earlier great um, great time to ask me questions. yeah i do my thinking <laughs> i actually think of you in the shower frequently oh. um <laughs> No, I actually have, I have these waterproof notepads in the shower and I actually write down so many, like you get all your good ideas in the shower. Anyway, that's enough about my showering (laughs) habits. Um, When you meet a bigger band, when you meet someone that you revere or idolize, obviously we all get nervous, like in the lead up, right? Yeah. Do you think it's better to know or not know about them? Like, I'll give you an example. Let's say, let's say you're meeting... The Ghost Inside, right? And you had heard of them, but you didn't know any of their songs. Do you think it's better to jump on and do some research and get familiar or is it better to go in not knowing and not being as nervous? Oh, man. Jeez, that's such a tough one. (laughs) Um, I mean, I guess it's probably a hard question for you because you're pretty familiar with a lot of these bands already. Yeah, it's well... It's the fact that, like, you know, it's good to research a band. Say, for example, the band wants to tour with you. Obviously, the right thing to do is um, watch previous performances and kind of study up on how the stage movements are like and everything. And, like, you know, the lighting's probably going to be different, but, you know what I mean, like the stage movements especially. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's good when you're going in blind because you don't know what to expect, Yeah. I guess. And I'm all about that. <laughs> I'm all about not not expecting that and just getting hit in the face and be like really makes you think on your feet and I love working under pressure like that. Roll with the punches, right? Yeah, that's it, man. <laughs> I'm always afraid that if I look like I know too much, I'll come off as a fanboy. Like I, yeah. I've not worked with too many high-profile bands to be in that situation many times, but um, a couple of times recently I've been doing some stuff for a uh, small publication from Sydney and they've sent me out to do some photos or like film an interview and it's like these international bands like I don't want to learn too much and then look like a fanboy it's kind of it's kind of I feel like it's good if you 
it border on don't caring rather than caring too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because exactly. I'm sure they see that all day, every day. Yeah. <laughs> In the same sort of creative industry, it can be here or overseas, is there someone doing something similar to you that you really aspire to, that you really admire? Mm, definitely. Like I definitely have people who I look up to. Um, yep. Tom Welsh, especially. especially. Um, mm -hmm. Remember when I first started watching his videos in – so I first started watching his videos in 2010 or 11. Um I found his work and I was like, I was like amazed. I was like, yeah, this guy's sick and constant inspiration. And then I worked, then I met him when he was here on with Architects on the Amity tour on the Chasing Ghost run. So that was when he was filming the DVD. Right. Um, and I met him and it's the first time I've ever been lost for words for someone. Oh, like really? I was stumbling on my words and like, because he turned to me and I was, um, I had a, cam a camera in my hand. He's like, "Oh, you got the same lens as me." And in my head, I was like, "Oh my god!" Oh, like freaking out. And uh, <laughs> but yeah, since then, like you know, we've become friends. We've worked together, um, worked together a couple of times. I think like we worked together when You Meet Six have come to Australia. Yeah, I remember. And um, yeah, it, like he's still a constant inspiration. Like he's just released a couple more music, couple of new music videos for While She Sleeps, mm -hmm. and. They just blow me away. I was like, damn, I gotta step up my game. <laughs> so That's good though. it's it's good to have something to look to and something to yeah, like keep you keep you on your toes, keep you inspired. Yeah, yeah. So I probably would say him, like that's like probably the first person that springs to mind, mm -hmm. I guess. And um Mark as well, who films Twenty One Pilot stuff, he's again, he's just a creative genius. And um, it's cool kind of seeing his ideas come to life as the band grows and they get more of a budget to actually work with those ideas. Sure. Um, yeah, it's like constant inspiration. <laughs> nice, man. Um, this is a bit of a random one. It's like kind of going off topic a bit, but do you have any... Yeah. I, I love this stuff. I love the techie, geeky stuff. Do you have any <laughs> apps or gadgets that make your life and your work easier? Hmm. Um, oh, I have the Canon app um where you can hook up your camera with the app and you can remotely shoot and remotely download okay you got um, the 6d yeah so 6d has inbuilt wi-fi and allows you to communicate to your smartphone you can download the images and that is by far the best tool i've ever had in my life i just just i set it up just before i left for america and that's how i got work through epitaph because i photographed let live on the first day of South by So What. And the second that they were done, I Wi Fi'd a phone photo to my phone and put up on Instagram. And I think I tagged Epitaph Records and then they saw it and they contacted me and they're like, hey, you know, it's South by the next day. We'd love for you to work with us and take photos with Ghost Inside and Prom Queen. And I was like, yep, sold. And so, yeah, that's a really important tool because it's good to have content come up like that like straight away yeah it becomes less relevant the more time you wait doesn't it yeah yeah i think i've kind of learned that the hard way yeah <laughs> um but yeah i actually used the 6d for the first time in singapore uh a month or two ago now and i was blown away about like by how good the wi-fi is it's like super fast yeah. it's super easy and yeah as soon as i came home i've i've got the 5d obviously the 5d mark three um which is great, but it doesn't have some of the simple features that some of the the lower level cameras have. So yeah, yeah. I was like doing my research and I ended up getting a um a Wi Fi SD card, which is good. It's not as good as the six D Wi Fi though. Yeah. But um it's definitely changed the way I shoot, having something there immediately, like on the day to upload. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's great when you're working, when you're in a tour environment as well because that's what bands want. They want like next day turnaround stuff and if you can even just like while you're photographing the set, keep like a mental note of like, oh, okay, cool, at this song I got this really cool jump shot. So it's in your head. So the second the set's over, set up your Wi-Fi, find that photo, download download a couple others, um, text them or email them straight to the band and it's like, you know, they they just finished playing like, 10 minutes ago and they have the photos ready to go for social media. So that's really good in terms of a business aspect while you're touring. That's a really good answer. I like that one. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so um, on the topic of touring, you, yep. my understanding is 
you have done a lot of touring. It sounds like you did a lot of touring in the earlier days and lately it's been a little bit more about the music videos. But when you are on tour, what do you expect from your bands? Obviously, the bands that would tour with the photographer, they're at a level where they don't make too much money. So it's hard for them to always pay you or the photographer or whoever else. What Mm. do you expect from them and do you have any sort of agreement? Well, yeah, like so you always got to come to a compromise. You got to value yourself as an artist, but at the same time, you understand that some of these bands that you're going to tour with, they're, they're not going to have the facilities that you want. Uh, and this is a very important tool that I think a lot of up and coming photographers need to learn is that if you jump on a tour as a photographer, you're bottom of the food chain. You can't, you can't like be like, oh yeah, like can I have like a rider or anything like that? It's like, no nah, man, like you are like even with bigger bands, it's the same thing. Like the bigger the band, you're still at the bottom of the food chain, right? And um, yeah, you just got to take it as it comes. So um, obviously, in like a business aspect, that's a different thing. So if you're working with a band like I don't know, Bring Me for example, like you know, Bring Horizon is huge, and like you know, they can accommodate a wage for you or something like that. Sure. But, you know, um, a smaller local band that had just started touring, they're not going to have the money. Um, So, yeah, you just kind of got to work out a compromise. Um, And then that's where it's really important where you as an artist have to value yourself. So, yeah, it it goes both ways. (laughs) Well, it's lucky for you that you're pretty low maintenance. We've done a um, a East Coast trip together. (laughs) And I, I, from memory, you can pretty much sleep anywhere in the car, yeah, on yeah, the floor, in, on the couch, in, a, in the van, just uh, cramped up as well. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Couple yeah. of couple of sangers from the servo, and you're all good. Yeah, I'm by far the most low maintenance person to have on the road. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely been a theme in a couple of the other interviews that I've done. The really important thing is to be a bro first to be yeah. just a friend to the band before a photographer or videographer. Otherwise, they're not going to want you around. They're not going to let you in to take the photos. Yeah, so yeah, it's exactly. obviously really important that you can hang. And I Nothing know you can. Else. I know you can hang. Yeah. You yeah, can hang, yeah. Warren. I got the hangs. <laughs> by the way, if, if anyone's listening and, and gets weirded out by when I call Warwick Warren, um, it's I don't even know where that started. but That started by Chris from Bellhaven. Um, in 2012, we met, and we were, it was like a, it was their tour with Save the Clock Town. We're in Byron, and they first got to meet me there. And Chris had already seen that North Lane video that I did forever ago, and yep. he was like, like him and I just broke down immediately, and um, he thought my name was Warren, <laughs> and then it just became a joke for the rest of the time. That, but like, know, it was an accident at first, was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So he like legitimately thought my name was Warren, and then it just kind of. It became like a running joke, I guess, and it's kind of grown from then. So it's funny. That's amazing. <laughs> like it. Yeah, to me, you'll always be Big Daddy Warren. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> On the flip side, what do the bands that you tour with expect from you? Like, uh, sort of like, you know, how early do you have to deliver your content, photos, videos, etc.? Uh, as early as possible, essentially. Um, some people are laid back by it, but I kind of want it out there as soon as you can because if you um i learned that kind of from a festival area so um say for example like what happened to me in south by so what there were no joke like 50 photographers there i actually have footage you can see like a snippet of like footage or a photo in the, of the photo pit and it's just packed and it's like it's like what soundwave is but times three in right. terms of photographers it's mm-hmm. mental um to have that first that quick turnaround is what stood me out from all of them like epitaph could have approached any of those photographers but they approached me because i got the photos like that plus i had like a i think it helped that i had a triple a pass as well because i got the photo from side stage um but yeah so that's a really important thing to have the content there ready to go for them for the social media so um other than that i think like i think that's like the main thing that they expect because some bands are laid back, some bands are like, where are the photos, man? So, yeah. yeah. Do you have any other sort of duties usually? Like, do you do a driving shift? Do you do, um, um, you know, do you have to do any sort of teching or anything at a, at a show or just help out where you can? 
I used to. So last year or year before that, was it the year before that? I'm kind of asking you this because you kind of would know. Yeah, it was the year before that. It was like a I was doing tour managing stuff as well. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like back then I was kind of just trying to prove like prove that I can do everything and and anything. But then um, as I got older and as I kind of grew, even though it's only been a few years. Sorry. Um, oh, it's been a few years. It's I've learned that it's just like cool if I. Like I'm better off just concentrating hundred percent on videos and photos, so that that way I don't have to think about merch. I have to think about driving. I can sure. just concentrate on my art and get the best content possible and grow as an artist. So yeah, yeah. I, I guess at least it's good that you can do those things because that's another reason that a band might pick you over another guy to take on the road because you know you've got a few extra skills. You can do merch. You can drive. You can yeah. You can help <laughs> out where you need. So it doesn't yeah. hurt. Yeah, so take that as a note for photographers coming up and be like, you got to learn to be doing, you got to be able to do everything. Grassroots. To start with, yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice one. So we're at the final section now of the interview. Yeah. This is what I ask everyone, and I'm, even though you've already half answered it, I'm pretty curious to hear what you say. Uh, so let's imagine tomorrow you're starting from scratch. You... Mm-hmm have all your photo and video knowledge, you've got your camera and you've got one lens and you've got $500 in your pocket. You're in a new town, you don't know anyone, how do you start your business again? Network. It's the only thing I can say. Just network, meet everyone and anyone. It's the only advice I really have. So and save you... the money. Save the money for the love of God. Save, save the 500 the Yeah, save the 500 put it in a bank account. Let the interest slowly build up because I'll help you in the future. All right, two <laughs> percent per annum. Yeah, that's it, man. It'll pay off in its uh, in the end. <laughs> Where does the network stuff from, though? Where do you go in this new town for um, the network? I'm, we're assuming they have gigs and a music scene. Yep, yeah, go find find out. We there's this wonderful thing called Google. Um, where you can type in the town, you can find out where the gigs are at, and just start going. Essentially, it's. It's not that hard, honestly, especially with now with social media. It's super easy to find out where the venues are, who's the managers of who, who's the booking agent. It's really easy to do now. Yeah. Yeah, I get the inboxes and I'm sure you get exactly the same. Like uh, younger kids getting into it, they'll be like, hey, man, like how do I get started? Like how do I get into this? And yeah, basically just what you said, it's like, well, yeah, go to the gigs, take the photos, <laughs> shake the hands, yeah, post them online, it. rinse and repeat. Yeah, I used to, in Brisbane, I used to, like, beg the promoters because I was, I was a poor uni kid and I couldn't afford to go to shows. I used to beg the promoter to let me in for free and in turn I'd film the gig for them and things like that and, and it worked out well. So, yeah. Nice one. So the next, the next few questions are what I call the cheesy gut reaction speed round. Just right. like a, a one-word answer is fine. If you want to elaborate, go for it as well. But um, just, your, just your gut feeling. Canon or Nikon? Canon. Canon. <laughs> All the way. You didn't even hesitate then. Oh, Mate, you're a video guy. That's why. I shot. I, I filmed on Nikon before. Never again. Really? Canon. Yeah. Okay. Canon. <laughs> Canon it is. I'm Canon too. Zoom Good. or Prime? Prime. Prime. Come on, man. You've got to have that low, like, you know, like that depth of field, that low aperture. Like, that's, the, that's what you want. I actually so. just recently got the... Sigma 35 1.4 art, which I believe oh, you have as well. Mate, oh, best it's a lens. Dream. It's, best it's lens. so hard to shoot anything else after shooting that lens. Yeah, exactly. Um, You don't use much flash, do you? No, I don't use any flashes. Okay, well, I'll Actually, leave out I, that question. No, no, you can ask that question because I've got a good answer to that. Okay, I, I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to say on camera or off camera flash. Um, I say no flash because it makes you challenge yourself as a photographer to get the shots of no lighting. I just did photos with Hellions um, at a venue called The Lab in Brisbane. There yeah. was pretty much next to no lighting and I still managed to get lights. And same concept, you just got to challenge yourself. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good answer. Thank you. I appreciate that one. <laughs> Live shows or posed pictures? Oh, this doesn't even count for you. You're a video guy. Come on. It's live, um, live shows anyways. Okay, well, let's no say... No nice controlled environment. Come let's on, say man. live shows or music videos. If you have live to do shows. one forever. Live, live shows? shows, for sure. It's constantly different. 
Um, yeah, it's an uncontrolled environment. It's better. Okay. Mac or PC? Mac, for sure. I've got a PC right here. It's gone to crap. Mac all the way. Well, you, your Mac's pretty beat up from what I can understand. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you just got to take care of technology and I'm I'm sometimes bad at that. <laughs> so I've broken my screen. <laughs> when um, For anyone listening, when Warwick was working at, what's the company called? Melodic Music. Yeah. When Warwick was working at Melodic, uh, he bought this beautiful new 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro and in the first week or so, the intern yeah. dropped it and basically stuffed the screen from the start. Yeah, bumped it, bumped it while I had it on my lap and it fell out. But, you know, I shouldn't have had it on my lap. I should have had it on the desk. So there you go. You live and you learn. Yeah. And you've kind of answered this. Damn it, Warren, you're like beating me to the punch. <laughs> if you only had one lens forever, what would it be? Oh, Sigma 35. Or well, like 35 in general, it's the most diverse lens that you can have for both full frame and crop sensors. It's just visually very pleasing, isn't it? That's it. Um, that's pretty much it, man. So where's the best cool. place that I can send people to check you out online? Um, probably my Instagram because Facebook's gone to crap now. Um, yeah. So my Instagram, uh, Instagram is Warwick Film. Um, it's spelled with two W's. And if oh, you know um, we put the second W, then kudos uh, to you. I'll link it all up in the show notes so everyone cool. can get the spelling right and everything. All uh, right, awesome. Um, <laughs> you just reminded me of one more thing that I want to get in before we leave. Yep. Um, in terms sort of the social channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Um, what are the challenges as a video guy? Obviously, Facebook is a killer because anything with a link in it, it just won't show in the news feed. It'll just mm-hmm. absolutely destroy the reach. How do you how do you promote your videos? How do you get them seen? Um, you just got to be lucky that the band you're working with it has a lot of friends, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. essentially. Um, I remember when we did the Graves video, before we released it, we had a Facebook group and they invited like hundreds of people that they've met along touring and everything. And the video just spread like wildfire. Like I was at the movies as it got released, it was like 7 p like 7 p.m. that we released a music music video and I turned my phone off because you know we're in the cinema. I wanna I wanna you know I pay like 20 bucks here. It's like sure. ridiculous. Yeah. So like you know I want to enjoy the cinema. Um watch the movie two hours later, open it up and it's got like eight and a half thousand views like wow. that. Wow. In one night. Like, it just blew up. It was awesome. Yeah. So, so was that was it like a almost like a virtual launch party that they made? Like a Facebook yeah. group, was it? Yeah, yeah. Cool idea. I still have that group up here actually. I can quickly quickly Hit tell me with you some how numbers people in it. The numbers were 117. And what's the video at now? Oh, that's a... All right, let's see. Oh, come on. There's links kind of everywhere. All right, cool. The video has 56,000 views. Nice. Yeah. And so you reckon it was like 8,000 views in the first night alone? Yeah, in like two hours it got like 8,000 views. That is amazing. Like I was even... Like we are all just like, holy crap, like that's amazing and the same as trophy eyes as well trophy eyes had the same thing i think it was like in the first 24 hours trophy eyes got like ten thousand views and it's nearly at a hundred thousand views now it's just like blowing my mind (laughs) that's unreal man well thank you so much for joining me tonight you've been very very easy to talk to and i appreciate the the persistence because we did have some (laughs) troubles earlier that's right man thanks for having me um it's been a pleasure and we'll have to do it again sometime soon we'll do an update in the future to see what you've been up to yeah definitely dude until then, I will talk to you soon. See you next time. Yeah, no worries. See you, man. Thanks, mate. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Well, thank you so, so much for sticking around all the way to the end. As always, the show notes can be found at bigpantsphoto.com slash podcast. You can see links to Warwick's work, his Instagram, some links to my work as well. And I've also got on my website a free ebook. It's a a PDF guide. It's about 20 pages long and it's about exactly the gear you need to take killer band promos. The best thing about it is it costs less than $130 for all the equipment in total. So there's no excuse to get into it. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. (laughs) 